Oh my god, here we are, season 2019, just about to start already. It doesn't seem like it's been that long of a summer. Um, but then again, when you sit there and look at the cricket and the tennis, uh, it has actually dragged a bit. So uh, very, very happy to be bringing you the first episode of 2019 at Crowcast Tuesday Night Live. And joining me this evening is Nikki Nui. How are you going, Nikki? I'm going very well. Footy's back. Yes. Footy is almost back. Not long to go. And uh, we have Donkey as well. How are you going, Donkey? Not too bad, Fiend. Uh, g'day, Nikki. How are you doing? I'm sick of cricket. No, I don't really care about tennis. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit like that. Yeah. No, I haven't been able to get into the tennis at all. Um, and the cricket's been dead set boring so <laughs> so you know I've, I've been pretty occupied over over the summer anyway but uh, i haven't taken any i don't think i've watched any of the test match at all have you guys watched much of the tests uh, and when i've gone up to see the, the parents dead set. sorry go on yeah i think i kind of saw it the parents have had it on gone oh is that where we're at okay yeah i i got to see a little bit of Perth, I reckon. I saw a bit of Perth, and um, um, but the um, Channel Seven commentary made me want to tear my hair out. So I, um, I uh, don't like change very much, and uh, and uh, uh, I could not do the rest of it. And the one day is a uh, hidden behind Foxtel, and I'm kind of refusing to go there. Yeah, I don't mind Foxtel now. With I with have Foxtel, but yeah, Foxtel is good. Yeah, I've got Foxtel, but I haven't been interesting. To watch. Any of you guys got Kaya? Are you hooked into that yet? Nah, but I'll probably I'll probably go live on that for the uh I'll go live on that for the footy season, I reckon, because that seems that'll have value for me there, but I wasn't gonna pay for the three months and leading up to it. I'll tell you what, if you're into uh NBA, it's fantastic. Yeah, uh, again, and NBA, but I'm a Lakers diehard Lakers man, and uh, and it hasn't been worth watching since Christmas. So I've uh, I've uh, I'm I'm having a sporting sook at the moment. A sporting sook. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair no. Enough. See, the, they've got supercars, so I'm kind of interested in that. I've got Fox still, but I'll have to invest in a probably an Apple TV or something like that. Chromecasts are easy. No, but then I like to use my laptop whilst I'm watching that. And you that can, doesn't work. You can watch. Just stream it from your phone. Anyway, I'm not no, going to debate. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, we've, got to, we've got to say hello to people that have joined us for our first episode. Uh, Adam on Facebook and on... He's got us covered everywhere on uh, Spreaker as well. G'day, Adam. Nice to see you again. Hope the summer has been good down at the farm. Uh, we've obviously got Sid Crow, we've got J Mac, we've got Matthew mm-hmm. Hall, we've got uh, uh, Nikki. What are you doing on the chat? You're supposed to be concentrating on what you're doing. Uh, it's, hey, I can multitask. <laughs> look, it's great to see everyone back uh, for another season and joining us. It's going to be a pretty crazy show uh, tonight. We're all sort of easing back into it. I've uh, I haven't done any preseason training whatsoever. I don't know about you guys, um, so it's going to be a little bit slow. But how about we just hook in to see what's going on over at the Crows with some news. Oh, that didn't work. What happened to that? (laughs) Which button to press now? Where'd my freaking news go? Oh, whatever. I hate to say I told you so. (laughs) (laughs) Go on, sing it. Sing it. And we're back. (laughs) All right. Uh, what have we got, Nick? Uh, do you want to start off with some AFLW? Um, we could do that. Well, I, oh, no, I how about we start thought... off with the yeah? We'll start off with the blokes first, and then we'll walk into the the girls. Well, I was going to start off with the we've got the the captain's name for both teams, and the the men are now following in the footsteps of the women, which is the right way because the women have actually won a premiership recently. Um, and that we don't we have co captains. Um, it was very interesting listening to um, with um, Tex and, and Sony. It was very interesting listening to the um, press conference because it, the impression I got from the way Tex was talking was that it, it was something that might have been on uh, Pikey's mind, but Tex 
was also possibly thinking going down that track was the impression I got from some of the things he said. What Did either of you two watch the press conference? Yeah, yeah. I saw it. I agree with that, Nick. From, I think, um, I think the big Texan. Sorry, we must have a delay. Here. Sorry, mate. Yeah, uh, um, we just it was just our awkward first start of season dancing without talking. <laughs> but um, um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Nick. I reckon he looked like he he wanted to do it. it not that he was tired of the job or anything like that, but um, I think he also it, it looked to me that everyone on that stage, you know, appreciated what Rory brings to the club and feels that he deserved um, deserved that opportunity. Um, and that didn't necessarily mean Tex didn't. So um, I don't always agree with the. Um, with the uh, double captain thing or this sort of compromise solutions on leadership positions. But I think, um, I think this might be a case where we got it right. I mean, yeah. we, we know Sliney had to work on some stuff and by the sounds of it, he has. Yeah. Signing a contract. <laughs> what do you reckon he needed to work on? Um, it was, he's good. Well, I know he needed more voice on the track. Um, and to be a bit more vocal about getting the feedback, etc., cetera. Um, and that has happened. But it was also, he's still outside of the club. He tends to keep himself to himself. Um, he doesn't have often the young boys coming to stay with him, whereas Tex often does. So it was that side of the leadership he's had to work on. Um, and by the sounds of it, he's, he's being a bit more um, proactive regarding not just what happens in the club, but also keeping tabs on the boys outside and, and you know, just checking up on them and, and giving them encouragement when they need to or helping steer them in the right direction. Yeah, okay. I, my impression was that um, Tex probably uh, warmed to the idea. I, the, judging by the comments that I've read and, and the bits that he said, etc., I don't think it was necessarily something that he originally thought of, but I think having having it put in front of him by Don, um, I don't think in the end it was a very difficult decision for Tex to make. I think he could see the wisdom of it fairly quickly. Um, and look, I, I think it. Uh, I'm a bit with you, uh, Donk. I don't. I'm not necessarily a a, a fan of the co-captains, but I, I think in this circumstance, uh, with two, um, bl- it's a bit like Judd and Cousins. Um, you know, one is the spiritual leader, one is the one is the 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 champion, I guess you'd say, um, and I think they complement each other really well. And and they're great mates. That just really helps, I think, as well. Is that they are such good mates. They've been through a lot together, and. I think that will actually help them because some of the other times when players get named as co-captains, you're like, well, how does that, how will that actually gel? How will that work? Whereas I think we kind of know how it's going to work for these two. They've got a business together. They were at the club at the same time um, and coming all the way through. So I think it's actually a really smart decision. Yeah. And it was interesting to see the reactions from some of the Crows stalwarts and wasn't it, just very predictable that the bloke that was most against it was Chris Bloody McDermott. Uh, oh, you mean, he's, clunk, club has he ever got right. a call right? Well, not only has he never got a call right, but I don't think he's ever supported anything the club's ever done. It's the most unusual uh, attitude by an ex-Crows champion. And I know he probably wants to be impartial and all the rest of it, but I think it's a bit more than that. I think there's a little bit of bitterness involved in that and... One, one bloke that you don't hear being involved in the club much post-career uh, is Chris McDermott. Um, and given that the club's worked fairly hard to get some of those other blokes back into the fold, I, I don't know. I, I, Chris, is, uh, Chris has got a bit of a stink on with the club, I reckon. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Or In Macca's absence, I should say, I couldn't agree more. Everything you've read from him for the last <laughs> 10 years is it? Yeah, yeah, it could. Um, everything you read from him for the last ten years has been complete out of dross de- delivered at the club, and um, uh, and uh, some serious mental gymnastics going on to create the arguments he's trying to do, which uh, um, at most stages I would say would be beyond bone because he sounds about as um, about as thick as two short planks. <laughs> and blokes in the chat well, saying we... controversy gets clicks. So that that's all well and good, but people actually got to read your stuff before you know. 
I mean, I don't... Do many people actually click on McDermott's stuff? The only reason I saw what he said was because no. it was in some other article. <laughs> no, he's, he it still holds the grudge for how he was sacked. Yeah. And delisted by the club. And seriously, dude, get over yourself. Um, but he also proved that he actually, for a, somebody who, you know, wasn't the most talented player, he still got the most out of himself and... As I said, he, he's the type of guy you'd want in the trenches. You, you know, you know that. And he was great as our first captain. But he actually doesn't really know anything about football because you look at what he did at North Adelaide as a coach and, my God, he was shit house. Well, he was very much a yeah. see ball, get ball kind of guy, wasn't he? And he, it was as tough as nails. No one could question his courage. Um, and he led that way. He led uh, probably not dissimilar to the way Rory Sloan plays, to be perfectly honest. But you're right, Nick, um, his post-playing career wasn't very stellar. Uh, his journalist career isn't very stellar. His coaching career certainly wasn't. And, um, you know, I mean, there's other blokes of that era that got dumped that have gotten over it. Tony Modra is back at the club, and you could argue that Tony was probably treated worse than anyone else at the Crows. So, yeah, it, it's disappointing, but I guess it's a, a just a product of that era, perhaps, where there was some great SANFL champions at the twilight of their careers that probably only had two seasons to give and Malcolm made some hard calls and uh, I guess it's not the way that they would have left the game had they finished their careers as SANFL champions, you know what I mean? So maybe a bit of, a bit of pill to swallow in that respect. Oh, well, he could have gone out a champion if he didn't let us get run over in the third quarter against Essendon in 93. Up to him. Um, as D- Harden up, Bones. As DSG has pointed out, though, that Chris, he is there for the father-son. So his son is part of the academy. Oh, he's a good um, bloke, mate. What? I really hope his kid plays <laughs> well then. <laughs> as... I've always liked McDermott, actually. <laughs> champion of the club. Sad what happened to him. <laughs> Pissed poor by the crowds, really. I mean, I can agree with the whole thing of, you know, he, he seems to try for the controversy or whatever, but it, I just look at his coaching career and it just proves to me he actually really is not somebody you should look to for valid football now. No. Anyway, let's so move. Says that, so says us on a podcast. Yeah, that's right. But at least we don't pretend. <laughs> 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 we know we're full of shit. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, injury news over the off season. Uh, I, I'm not going to say anything because last season I jinxed the whole freaking lot. So someone else yeah. talk about injury <laughs> news, please. Go on, Donk. Take one um, for the team. I don't know. I don't want to be responsible with this, but I. It looked clearly. Uh, clearly, we had some really good reports before um, the end of the year that our blokes had come back pretty fit and. And booming along, which I thought was pretty outstanding. Um, I think there are a few extra weeks off, and um, and the surgeries, you know, at the end of last year or the end of the season last year, are actually going to allow us to um, springboard into this season, which will be nice after the um, sort of dead cat bounce that we started off with at the start of the year. Found a bit of found a bit of motor, and then then died by the middle of the year. So um, hopefully, we've got some people with some run in their legs. Um, I there's a there's a young fellow we haven't seen for all of last year and um, he's been quite injured that seemed to be going okay but then sort of had a week off. So I'm not going to mention him by name just um, because... Uh, but he's I'm, back. But I'm scared of... Well, I'm just, no, but I don't want to say that it's all good because I think it is all good <laughs> because um, that's what Phoenix did last year and no, we never I'm saw him again. I'm not going near it. So, I'm not going near it. So, <laughs> um, We're just not going to say any names. No, no. Uh, our, in, our injury list should be better because McGovern's off, so or McNuggets, <laughs> so I like to call him now. So that's that's at least 15 weeks worth of hamstrings that we don't have to worry about this year. Well, he's already um, done a bloody what? shoulder at Carlton, so, you know, he's already Yeah, out. didn't he break something? No, he, he broke his back. collarbone or something. No, he's back. He did Was a vertebrae. It... Did he? <laughs> yeah. He's a bloody gymnast then. What a dickhead. Yeah. yeah. I, I reckon it was from carrying around the spare tyre, but apparently he went up from that big mark and came down and, and uh, um, came they down like, and hurt. They like his back. breaking bones at Carlson. Yeah, well, they're, they're going to right. I think we should do a segment this year on the... Um, like a version of the Doomsday Clock, but but sort of what pick does Adelaide get clock? You know, we, we're one... <laughs> 
we get pick one, pick two, and go around the clock back like that. Yeah, yes, it may make us actually barrack for port. What? Oh, I just, look, I wouldn't go that far. I don't know about that. <laughs> Nick. Come on. Well, we, no, no, no. We may want them to win a game. Yeah, we just we just pretend footy's not happening this week. In fact, I'm pretty sure that the buy in round 13 has got a good chance of knocking Carlton off this year. That's yeah, I reckon you're probably right. right. I reckon yeah. you're probably right. Now, we might actually run that uh, Doomsday Counter on the website, Donkey. That is an excellent idea. Uh, I'll yeah. see what I can do there. Yep, like that. Well I've done. Got, I've got three left for the season, so watch out. Space so, them out. Yeah. Are, are there any... I, I don't think there's actually any major injuries at the moment, is there? Talia had some I mean, surgery, didn't Talia. Yeah, yeah. Ta- Talia did. Um, McKay's still out, um, but I think he's... Isn't is he, he still at the club? Soon? Yes, he is. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, easy, he's our Mister Fix It. Right. Um, um, Otten, Hardigan. Yeah, and Hardigan, and uh, Dad said to me the other day, he "Goes, who's that tall forwards? I mean, that tall backward." And it was like Keith, and that's why we also got in Jordan Butts, although he's very young. Um, but I was just looking at that and thinking. We've trialled Fog, so we know we can throw him down there if we need. So, yeah. oh, yeah, and Matthew Hall says Knight had something. Knight always has something. Yeah, uh, big season for Knighter, so I hope he can get on the park um, and give it a good shake because uh, we've got some lads in now that uh, might overtake him if he's not careful. And uh, he's right too. Tom did a had something as well. What was going on with Tom? He had quad tightness, um, had a scan, was back training the next day, I think. So not um, nothing nothing to see here, as they say in the classics. Tish, you just got very, very intimate then, Donkey. Did you just like <laughs> fall over? Did you swallow the microphone or something? Hi, oh, that's right. Welcome back to tonight's episode of the podcast. <laughs> donkey it's really great to be with you. I've been off the piss for three weeks and I'm going a little bit strange. <laughs> Especially up where you are. Yeah, how does that work? Uh, it's it's. Um, uh, I just I don't want to keep failing liver function tests, so uh, we've gone <laughs> with uh, we've gone with a few weeks off. I'm going to do Feb fast as well, which will be uh, interesting for the whole the whole world. Well, we're, not um, gonna, we're not going to like you by about March. You're going to be an angry man. Oh, thanks. So you like me now? That's lovely. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, I won't tell you, Donkey, that my mother was really happy that my dad was going in for a liver function test and it came back as normal. Oh, and wow. so he came out going, I can drink twice as much. He's a Barossa boy. He can yeah, put it away. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, anyway, my, uh... Come on. Shut up with your <laughs> Sorry. <brain. laughs> it's our first one back. Let us have a chat. Don't give a shit about your bloody Can's liver, everybody... for Christ's sakes. Oh. <laughs> I mean... It's, it's actually been fairly quiet. On Are the, you, the, donkey on the, the front. bloody injury list with a with a liver. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just saw it. he actually up up there the the top end that you can try to not drink, but doesn't alcohol just float in the air everywhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty it's pretty much part of the um it's part of how you do it because it's very hot and you got to replace your fluids. So we um we uh, are quite serious about our hydration up here, and we make sure that we're always um always in top health. Now I can, I'm just channeling my inner Pete um, and straightening the ship up. What other bloody injury news have we got? I think that's well, about it. I think that's a I bit think that's kind of about. Oh, Gallucci. Gallucci had a little bit with his. Yeah, feet, but he's but we, back on as well, I, isn't he? I think he's back training. Yeah. I think he's back on. And we. I think Tex is on full training, isn't he? Yeah, t- um, Tex is. Um, he who shall not be named. Mm. Um, he was at eighty percent. Yeah, I think for a while until he had a, a week off, but that is still pretty good. Yeah, and Sloane's been ages since he's been. Up. Yeah, Sloane's I think it was an eighty percent. Yeah, well, I think it was eighty percent to make sure he didn't blow out. So it wasn't even necessary that he couldn't have done more. It's just that they didn't want him to. So, you know, happy with that. Well, considering he's been on twenty oh, percent for the last two years. McPherson, and his dodgy groin. Oh, that, oh, look, I've forgotten about him, to be honest, and I, I don't mean to be horrible to the lad, but, jeez, is he ever going to get on the park? Well, he had osteitis pubis, and that takes a while to sort out. Yeah. 
And I think with with C's last year, we proved that we could get we could actually get the OP done right when the right strength training program, which we didn't get too many success stories last year with with uh, recovering from injury. But I think Seeds was definitely one of them. So are we seeing possibly an influence from Steve Saunders being at the club already? Well, I reckon I reckon our energy list right now compared to where we were last year would be um, would be a fair indication of that. No? Yeah, I agree. I'd say so. I agree. Now, Vardy Magic in the chat says he wants uh, updates on Carlton injuries. Of course, Alex Vasolo decided to do something weird. Uh, he had yeah. a bit of a wrestle with a mate. We don't even, just yeah play wrestling with his mate a bit on weird. a show day. Oh. <laughs> sounds not sounds lovely. <laughs> I mean, we shouldn't hang it too much on Alex because he's had a few uh, a few problems, but we will hang it on Carlton for managing their players so bloody poorly. Yeah. Uh, obviously, yeah. McGov, uh, Cruiser. 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 Uh, Doherty's knee, obviously. Doherty again. Um, yeah, that's going to be pretty knee. sad. Yeah. What else have we Killed got? Killed my super coach, the defence. Yeah. Um, uh, McGovern, obviously. Uh, Paul C in the chat. Gov broke his bank account. <laughs> and then, yeah, as uh, DSG and Hori say, uh, the uh, co-captain in waiting down at uh, the little brother, Ollie Wines, he uh, did something. He yeah, took his shoulder at water skiing. Water skiing. Yeah. Mm, professional football or water skiing in pre-season. Well, I don't know they like, actually... Did they say water skiing specifically? I just read skiing. No, I, so, I think it's water skiing. No, it didn't Treadway do else. something water skiing yeah, when he was playing? he skis during the season. Yeah, but that's not something that... I don't... If you're on a... Downhill. Uh, if you're on a... <laughs> <laughs> looking yeah, downhill. Very good. Well, if he ski, I hope he skis oh, straight than his bloody kicks. But didn't <laughs> See, didn't sorry. um didn't Treaders do something water skiing when he was playing a few years ago? I yeah, and so a, did Riley Knight. Oh well, we aren't talking about it anymore. All right. Uh, yeah. What else? Anyone else of any note that's been injured? Uh, oh, didn't Harley Bennell do another calf, or is that? I forget, have I just made that up and confused it with him getting drunk at a pub somewhere? Well, I was going to say, did remember. he do that running from the cops? Or <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I think I think one of those things have happened recently. Is either the pub thing or a calf thing? I just can't remember which one. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. not good for the poor guy. No. Look, anyway, that's about it for injury news. Uh, suffice to say, touch wood and everything else, uh, we're not travelling too badly. Um, time will tell. We've got to obviously get through JLT and obviously the club only releases what they want to release as well. So um, hard to know for sure. But uh, the vision that I've seen from the from the pre-season training and, um, you know, reports, etc. sound positive. Um, and as you mentioned, Nick, uh, hopefully uh, Saunders has been able to implement some good soft tissue management down there and uh, get rid of these bloody hamstrings for 2019 because we don't need a repeat of that. Okay. Well, I think maybe I, I heard that the club, you know, gave Burton extended holiday into the start of January just to make sure he's refreshed and recharged. So maybe that's what marries up. That was <laughs> we'll, all bullshit, by the way. We'll leave the Burton bashing for Macca next week. And g'day to Macca. He's a bit under the weather. Um, so, yeah, uh, ask Frank Mayhem. He what? <laughs> Nothing. We don't need details, for God's sake. <laughs> all right. Nikki. Stop it, donkey. Let's talk about AFLW, shall we? Yes. There's no intro music. Oh, yeah, actually, I can give you some intro music. One more one moment. Oh, well. I can't let that play too long or else YouTube does me for copyright. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> um, I actually went along to the open training session a couple of weeks ago. They had uh, just to try and see how we were, if we're setting up um, any differently, et cetera, things like this. Um, one of the things I noticed was there was a lot of laughter, but they were working hard and it was one of those stinking hot, I think it was 36 degrees when I'm sitting in the shade at Norwood. That seems that to be a bit a of a theme down the club this year. We've had, you know, talk of Pikey actually cracking a smile and being pretty relaxed and and now you're saying that the, the, the girls were pretty relaxed. Is, do you reckon that's a bit of a, uh, 
a, a bit of a, um, a concerted so. effort to, to, you know, lighten up a bit? Yeah, um, and, th- and that's what I kind of noticed. I mean, they, I could see they were still having fun last time, but it, it just seemed to be a little bit more um, um, under Clarky. And the one thing I'll say is I did, they, were, they had lots of different, um, you know, things going on around the ground, but um, I kind of kept my eye on the midfield because Clarky was going through the motion with them um, in terms of the ruck setups and the, the midfielders. And whilst the other ones were swapping around, being forwards or backs or, you know, doing stuff inside, he kept all the midfielders in, in there and was doing some stuff with them. And he gets a, quite a bit of a bum rap regarding his uh, what's perceived to be poor coaching. Is that, um, is that workplace harassment? You can't, you can't just diss out bum figure, raps, can you, Dom? I, I mean, he gets that from the big footy crowd and from other people who talk about his his coaching of the men's team. Why are you going to leave me hanging, say, Donkey? I, I, was, I, I, just, I actually zoned out for a second. <laughs> My one and only joke for the year and you bloody missed it. <laughs> yeah, I think I missed last year's too. <laughs> you might have to work and deliver it. <laughs> Pay attention, you bastard. Um, it, for me, it was it was really interesting to watch the way he was actually teaching the, the different areas. Um, he was mostly getting, unfortunately, um, the beast who's out for the full season because she did her knee. But I was really looking forward to them watching the trial game because what I saw had me quite impressed. Um, and then the trial game, I was also very impressed as well. It was very reminiscent of a men's AFL team. Um, the one thing I noticed from the training was he was very much pulling them up regarding their positioning and, and zoning and getting in those right positions. I mean, they did it as well the, the last two seasons, but it was a lot more emphasis on it. And you could see because we've now got the five six five formation that has to happen, I don't think there's going to be too much of adjustment for the Crows team regarding that because we often did set up that way at the start of bounces etc anyhow we were one of the few teams who would put wings and force other teams to play our way um so i think we've got a little advantage there do you think um, um uh, it's a good point that you make about clark nikki because we would be the only are we the only club that has uh someone who's involved in the men's program coaching the women so i, don't, I can't think of any other club that has that arrangement oh, I see. Was Sarsovich, I thought he was doing some stuff with the Brisbane Lions as well. Yeah, but I reckon he... With the men's team. I don't but I think he did come from the, the women's system. Yeah. Yeah, Clarky with the dual role. I, I mean, Matty Clark, let's, let's, you know, let's be real. He's, he's a, a, a good AFL, or an excellent AFL player. Um, been in the system very long. So, I don't know. I reckon we might benefit from that. And like you were saying, Nick, the, the new girls that that played in that trial game against Frio, they were, they were pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, that, that ridiculous goal that Chloe Shear yeah, kicked, yeah. where she put, she looked at the ball, she looked at the goals, and she deliberately put that ball on the point. Yeah, she actually looks quite um, natural. Uh, she is, I've only ever seen her, I think a couple of times, I, I saw little bits of her um, playing um, in... The women's league here and but i heard so much about her from so many other players they were just like no 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 this girl is just amazing um one of the funny things from training is a couple of the injured players were hanging around towards the end of course they've got the big green bin they're trying to throw the ball and get it into the bin trying to kick it everything of course they're all missing and everything else and somebody kind of does tries to do a little bit of a trick kind of one that doesn't quite work one of the other players walking past just goes, Chloe would have got that. And I didn't quite twig at the time, but it was whilst I was watching and seeing what she did going, they already know that this girl has insane level of skill. So yeah. if if she can bring consistency, and I think if you have her swapping with her and Erin between a forward and midfield, that's not too bad. So we're talking rookie of the year here. Oh, 
It'll be interesting to see how some of the others go. They do like their uh, Victorian ones, mm. as always, and there's a few more of them. And I think they'd really like to spruce up uh, particularly either um, a North or Geelong. Um, yeah. Somebody from there. Yeah, but try to pump that up. I think, I think she's a very good chance, a very, well, very good the- chance. They wanted to give the first MVP to um to Daisy Pinter, but uh, Daisy um, Daisy Pierce uh, Pierce, yeah, and uh, and uh, you know Erin just blew him out of the park. So you know there's, there's there's scope for being heaps better here. Yeah, I really like the look of um, Jess Foley. I think just watching that trial game, there were a lot of miss marks and everything else. But you would know, Donkey, that that's a lot to do with the weather, the conditions that were up there. You can see at the start of the quarters, oh, yeah. the hand the handling was very good for about a minute or two. And then the ball got wet. Yeah. Um, the one thing I really loved was the handball, the run, the overlap. And it was very proactive handball. Um, it was, if it didn't quite work, didn't mind. They were trying to create um, something there. Yeah, and, and and the thing that I noticed, I didn't get to see the last game, but the, at the um, previous game that I was at, which I think was uh, the Freo Adelaide actual round four or whatever it was match last year, um, the uh, the humidity and the dew point subtract the moisture in the ball. So uh, when they go to kick it, that just it's just falling short by 30 percent every time, and yeah. uh, that makes it a bit hard for that chain of movement. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see what they do with this first team um, to cover uh, the loss of Rhiannon Metcalf. Um, I think they really like the idea of playing Jess Foley at the centre half back roll and using Rhiannon and Jasmine Hewitt as those who swap. I think what this is going to do is what we had last year when um, Rhiannon also missed a couple of games is that you will possibly have um, Sarah Allen taking the backline ruck taps and then we'll... I mean, we could actually play Hatchard in the ruck and we did it as well with um, Perkins, yeah. who then becomes an extra midfielder. Then they just play midfield forward. Um, and save for for that area. So it's going to be interesting to see that first selection as to how we structure up, knowing we don't have our number one ruck and haven't heard anything yet about Jasmine Hewitt's ankle as to whether she's going to be available. Yeah, look, I think they're going to have to... I, I felt like for the first couple of years of... Um, uh, the the competition we played a very similar way and I think to some degree we were found out a bit last year they sat on Perkins and you know shut down our playmakers they couldn't shut down all of them of course but I, I felt like we we're a bit one dimensional so it's going to be interesting to see if they do change it up a bit Nicky and become a bit more versatile in the way that they play and and the positions that they put the girls in yeah, we really liked, obviously, the move of Ange Foley into the midfield. We, we put her there to actually be a tagger, but then she also went and got her own ball, and she played entirely in the midfield um, last the other weekend in the, in the trial game. So I, I think that's... We, we had her, we had Hatchard in the midfield. She's a really nice, big body, beautiful kick on her, makes the right decisions. I actually really like Hatchard. I think she's taken a step up um, from what she showed last year and also in the SANFLW. So we've got those kind of players who can do that job. But then we've also got Renee Forth from GWS. And she's a really handy midfielder um, as well. So we've introduced that as new blood as well as with Ebony. You can push Randall through there. You can have Erin in for moments and then out again um, because she is a bit older, but she's also so damaging up forward. Yeah. Um, the one How's thing I did quite? notice in the truck, perfectly, two two healthy legs. Yeah. Okay. Not a problem at all. Um, the one thing I did notice is that in that trial game that she was just being hung on to the whole time. So there were a couple of times she got paid, um, that and a few other times not. Uh, Ebony Marinoff was much better at actually showing the umpire and being held on to. Um, and I, and I think that's not in Erin's nature. So much. No, um, but it's one of those things, isn't it, Nick? Because the umpiring isn't of the same standard as the men's, obviously. No. I I think the girls have got to be prepared to actually. Yeah, they've got to be prepared to actually not play for freeze, 
but certainly make it known to the umpire when when something's there because I, I felt the whole time that that we've been a, a bit of a victim of, of that sort of tactic, the, the holding and all that sort of stuff. Um, and we yes. tend not to do it ourselves. And that's not, you know, that's not rose-coloured glasses. That's just what I've observed. Yeah, so what is it? Um, Vardy Magic's asked, have they introduced a shitload of new rules? They've fixed one up, which I'm quite pleased about. So we've still got that out-of-bounds rule, but they've taken it out of the Horde 50. It's only between the arcs that the last touch um, rule. Um, th there's that one. I'm not sure about some of the other ones. I know they kind of put some in, but that's when everything else was happening. I was like, no, I just need a bit of a break. Um, and I can't pull anything up quickly at the moment, but we it's definitely there's the five six five formation, which must be at every centre bounces. Yeah. And at the start of each quarter, um, there's the bit about the um, that the out of bounds rule, similar to what we have in the SNFL men's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is only in the the midfield between those arches. They don't. They've also got the same. Um, that's also being trialled with the men. They can bring the kick out out 15 metres. Yep. So it's not from the edge of the square. It's actually further out. All that meant on the weekend that I saw from our trial game was that everybody just sets the wall up a little bit further back and then it keeps getting shunted straight back in again. So that didn't really affect it too much. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how that goes over this first weekend. I don't um, think we would have seen all the tactics, Nick, because I can see no, that I... extra five metres being a real advantage together with the, the play on rule, the fact that you don't have to kick it to yourself and all that sort of crap. I can yeah, see a lot of fast and... breaking and coast to coast stuff going on in both men's and women's. I mean, our game had a, a, a quite a bit of high scoring, um, which is really good to see. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's kind of what they've wanted to do. Um, people kind of can't get their head around that it's actually only a 20-minute quarter. That means it's going to be less scores. Mm -hmm. They just kind of think of it, oh, there's still playing a game of football. I want to see 100 points. Yeah. That is going to be a, rare, a rarity. <clears throat> um, and the AFL has, once again, completely dropped the ball on promoting this correctly. Um, and as I said to you guys um, when we did a little pre-chat before coming on here, but finding out that, in that first season of the AFL, it was actually somebody with a proper marketing degree who offered their services for free to the AFL who ran it all. Yeah. And the AFL then just dropped the ball um, unless they, they don't want to put the money into it, which we can see with how much they're trying to push the AFLX, which really, who gives a shit, honestly, about Does, the AFLX? And we'll with get to the AFLX. Names, as the, as and it's only been playing Marvel. Oh, fantastic. I've just been hanging. Well, it's, <laughs> it's our feature presentation, the AFLX. So we just thought we'd get through the minors first with the, you know, the men's comp and the, and the AFLW. But, you know, yeah. just rounding that off, um, Nick, we've got the Bulldogs first up at Norwood um, on yes, Saturday the night. Yep. Uh, at 8 o'clock at Norwood. Should be a great game uh, and would be great to get off to a good start. Yeah, we, we tend to... Um... They, they tend to get a little bit of a head and then we run over them and they lose often by a close margin or something and they really hate that and it's so delightful. Yeah. So well, I that's hope a tradition it's actually a bit more of a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just hope we continue that. I, I do remember the last time um, when that happened, like last season's game, and I was sort of walking out and, of course, being abused by Bulldog supporters that were only good because of one player. I was like, well, too bad. And um, there's this girl, she's standing there and she had a, a pin badge on it and it said, doggies do it best in September. And I'm like, well, A, it's not September and not against us. Yeah, and well, not once, traditionally. Once in 60 years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let them have their moment. All right, well, look, everyone uh, should get down to that game. It's uh, going to be good weather on, uh, on Saturday and uh, they're always good fun down at Norwood Oval. It's nice and intimate there at the ground and I think it's a really good-sized ground for women's football, not being degrading. Yeah, um, but I, it's I think... just horrible to watch sometimes as a spectator and there's, and there's one of the stands missing now. Yeah. Well, that's that's going to be interesting. Yeah, that is right too. You're right. Um, uh, I think in general the grounds are, are far more appropriate 
uh, this season. So hopefully we see some higher scoring games and, uh, uh, we, you know, it'll be very interesting interesting to see how those rule changes go. Do we, it, Don, was, just flicking back to the men's for a sec, uh, what do you think of the rule changes for 2019 in general? Um, I, I think I think there's... Uh, I worry that they play around with the rules too much and the umpires don't know how to interpret the ones they've got in front of them um, as a general feeling with the rules. But um, I, I think that the... Uh, um, I think we're going to take advantage of them, though. I actually think they're going to be good for us. I think that um, um, Brody Smith and uh, and probably Seeds um, sprinting out of the square and dropping it as long as they can will, will set off some really quick-scoring transition chains, um, yep. uh, which I think is going to be a good thing. Um, and I also think that the, that forcing teams into a proper setup are going to mean that um, you know some of the rumble ball that Tigers are going to play um, is going to be disrupted a bit, and probably the way Sydney are going to play is going to be disrupted a bit. And well, I don't um, actually and see that having much of an impact, to be honest. The six six six. No, because it's just at the very start. Yeah, but you know, I'm talking about breaks out of the square. So you know, if we break out of the square and and just bomb it up really high, and you've got Tex Fog and and uh, JJ all having a chance to stand under it. I think that that is a good, you know, that's, I think we can be, take advantage of that with the quality we've got down there. Don't forget that um, we've benefited a lot from off the back of the square stuff as well, though. So, you know, yeah, it, it uh, does yeah. limit us as well. It, it'll come down. Look, I think, I think Maxi Gorn and Brody Grundy are going to be benefited a little bit. Um, so I think we'll need to see Source um, wind back the clock and then add some add some sauce and add some more sauce to it. And maybe we see uh, Riley O'Brien play a bit more of a role this year. Um, but I'm, you know, if we get um, the bloke that we're not naming, you know, Rory Sloan, Gibbs and um, and and Bob back in the centre square for most of our uh, for most of our starting bounces, then I think we're going to be pretty competitive and we should have first use of the ball uh, more often than not. So um, I think we'll take advantage of them. Um, but, uh, you know, more confusing things for these numpies to um, to uh, wrap their heads around is going to be a problem and I think we're going to get I think we're going to get very angry and frustrated by the way that the hands in the back is going to be interpreted because we're so used to seeing no touching now we will watch we'll watch Jack Rewalt basically deck someone in the middle of his shoulder blades and not get called for it at some I, point this year. I'm one of the few people who really liked the hands in the back rule because my my thinking is that there's too many grey areas in Aussie rules and we yeah. don't we don't like ticky touch stuff, but by the same token, you've got to make the game as easy to umpire as possible. And I thought the hands in the back rule um, allowed the umpires to be definitive in their decision making, and the players adapted within a few weeks. You you just knew you couldn't put hand in the back. Now now we're back to this interpretation situation, and we'll we'll very quickly go back to the very reason why that rule was brought in in the first place: too much inconsistency. I, I really mm. I, I'm disappointed that they that they've gone that way um the obscure one is i don't know whether you guys are across this one but the marks and, and free kicks in defense when a defender marks or receives a free kick within nine meters of their own goal the man on the mark will be brought in line with the top of the goal square oh so like, so like uh so like, like why the, is that just like the opposite of having a set shot for the goal square like you know you just straighten them up i think it's i think it's open the ground up yeah. yeah, I think it's to try to get it out of the area, but you've still got a zone going on. Isn't it going to slow play down while you bring the bloke back on the mark in front of the goal square? I don't like you, that you at would all. think, but the AFL don't understand how umpiring actually works and how the speed of the game actually works. It's kind of interesting because uh, Joel Selwood was talking about they've been training to the new rules mm. um, at Geelong, at their training, mm. and he actually said one of his comments was, oh, there's... I mean, yeah, there's going to be more one-on-one -on -one contests um, and people will like that, but there's also a little bit more stoppages, yeah, he's noticed. Yeah, the game will definitely slow which, down. Definitely which, slow which down. Which is not what the AFL wanted. Yeah. Uh, well, I think they did it in some respects, Nick, because I think they see the speed of the game as having a correlation with impact injuries. Um, yeah. But as a spectacle, they want free-flowing. Uh, uh, you know, overall, I didn't think any of these rule changes were really, really required. Um, 
didn't they talk about they were also going to rejig how they're um, interpreting holding the balls? Well, they're and the illegal disposal. That. Well, yeah, just just umpire fucking correctly. Well, that's that, I think we've had this discussion last year too, Nick. That yep. if they actually interpreted the well, not interpret. Oh shit, donkey! I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that's if, where I was shutting up before. They, <laughs> if they actually um, officiated the rules as they are written then they wouldn't need to make all these fucking changes. The fact is that most nope. of these changes are because of the way that they uh, apply them. Avoid, he says yeah. avoiding the word interpret. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you need the thesaurus out. <laughs> so, you know, it's, nah. it's actually going to be a very different game. You know, being able to play on while a 50-metre penalty is being measured out is an interesting concept um, because essentially it's, it's free ball. Because the the player can, isn't allowed to be infringed while they're uh, advancing up to the fifty metre, but they can very quickly, whilst that's happening, play on. Um, and then you've got, of course, coupled in with that, how are they going to use? How are they going to tie that in with the east west situation? The the five metres either side or ten metres either side or whatever it is. I can see that going haywire pretty quick, smart. Um, you know, the prior opportunity in the ruck contest, I don't know whether that was necessarily uh, required to you. Not really. Yeah. I, I thought the ruck contest has been good. I actually like the fact that they couldn't grab it the, out of the air. I hate the nomination thing. I, I think that's stupid. To me, that's saying that the, um, the umpires on the field, you can't tell who's going to be the ruckman. Well, I... Uh, I don't. I don't have a problem with the way things were in uh, ball up situations. Uh, I didn't mind third man up at all in ball up situations, and I feel like the only time there was an injury possibility with regards to third man up was at boundary throw-ins, um, and it's very easy. You just two blokes go for the ball. If two players from one team go for the ball, then they they get penalised. I don't think yeah. they need to bloody nominate, but you know, what do I know? Um, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I guess we'll see how they play out. And uh, like you, I just wish they'd stop messing with the freaking game. I kind of liked it a few years ago. Yeah, let it go. Let it actually evolve. Yeah. Instead of trying to tinker. I mean, one thing's for certain, Steve Hawking's obviously been given a bit of a mandate and uh, most of these are the product of his uh, brain, I would imagine. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, uh, anything else to talk about before we wrap up for the evening? Donkey's favourite thing. Yeah. Are we doing we'll that? We're talking about the live season. Oh, yeah. Draft. Actual fucking hex. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So there's it's very been, exciting times. I, I must apologise. I'm used to summer months and drinking and all the rest of it, and my mouth has been very foul this evening, so I do apologise to those people that are listening. I'll try and tidy it up. No, people that people that swear more are highly intelligent, according to psychologists. <laughs> Fucking I. Uh, I must be. This, I, yes. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that one. This whole, go podcast, the this whole podcast debunks that theory. Hey, because I've got was... a section that's a cock wobbling num nuts. Exactly, and look how... Oh, no. Anyway. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> AFLX, go for it, Donk. This is your baby. Well, look, it's very exciting times. Fifty percent of all captains in the AFLX were uh, have either played for the Adelaide Crows or currently play for the Adelaide Crows, which is uh, which is uh, obviously a homage from the AFL to the club over their inaugural AFLX championship. Um, and uh, look, it's going to be very exciting next Friday. Uh, not next Friday, next uh, Wednesday. Uh, there'll be a nationally broadcast live draft of all the captains. Uh, standing up on the side of the school shed and picking the players that they're going to play with. Um, we've heard that uh, every club's been asked to put forward four players to play in their squads. Um, and uh, we, uh, it'll be interesting to see. And if you know some of the top quality talent is on show uh, and what that looks like. Um, uh, last year, um, we, you know, we had superstars we hadn't heard of before, like uh, Tom Doty come through the ranks of AFLX and... Uh, 
and uh, you know show the medal what they're going to give us through the season. So uh, we'll be interested to see where we go there. Uh, I'm obviously backing in the deadlies um, with with Eddie Betts, um, uh, and they'll be taking on um, uh, Patrick Dangerfield's uh, lightning bolts um, and Jack Rewalt's uh, green um, green donkeys. Maybe he's green donkeys <laughs> or something. Um, yeah, they're green something. And um, and uh, it looks like Nathan Fife is going for the um, uh, Ford Fairlanes by the look of it. We've, they've they've all seen to picked up the um, the badge off a car for the front of it. So look, it's going to be very exciting <laughs> times. So people people have been really excited that this is concept's been brought back. And uh, now that we're putting you know clubs' most high valued assets um, into a kamikaze field to injure themselves for an entire season, um, you know it's going to you know it's going to really going to raise the stakes. You know yeah. we'll. Will Vice Captain Patrick Cripps go out and, and get and deliver us pick one before the first bounce of the season? Who knows? <laughs> That'd be nice. Um, I'm, I'm just a little concerned about this the, the schoolyard picking because um, you put four names forward. Now, what happens if one of those names is picked? I mean, how, how you, you're going to feel like that kid in the schoolyard who never got picked. I, I don't know what that kid feels like, Mickey, so tell us. The only difference is that that kid in the schoolyard is on a million-dollar contract, you know. He doesn't probably mind yeah. if he sits out. Um, he'll just <laughs> go back to pre-season training. But can anyone tell me what the point of this is? Uh, pushing Marvel Stadium, increased crowds in Victoria. That, that's all I can kind of think because it's only being played at Marvel. They're not playing it around the ground. I'm sorry, if you're AFL, why is it only being played in Victoria? Why? And didn't they want it on a square ground? But Marvel Stadium's not square, it's round. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's, it's, uh, it, it's a bit of a comedy, really. Um, I, I can't understand. And to be perfectly honest with you, I can't understand why the Crows would release a 30 however old uh, player who's obviously coming towards the end of his career and yet still is integral to our premiership chances. What, what, and notwithstanding all the other blokes that are involved in this, but why would you put, a, why would you put one of those blokes up? Well, maybe Eddie wanted to play. Maybe that's, that's not, what. That's, yeah, that's not the point, repping, though. Repping is Indigenous. But it's not the point whether he wants to play. Space, is, yeah. This is this is a professional football competition. What if Eddie does a uh, a hip or an ankle and and you know his his uh, his season's basically over? And it's an absolute travesty. And yeah. look, I think you, I don't think you're wrong here, Dean. I yeah. don't think you're wrong here at all. Um, but it is what it is, and we've got it in front of us. And there's clearly some you know, Gil McLaughlin master play in the background here, where he has to <laughs> tinker with everything and come up with a brand new spanking idea. And, Did he talk uh, to Scott Morrison for marketing ideas? Because that's what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, it, I, I, don't, I look even even the great ScoMo, I don't think, is this hair brain. <laughs> oh. well, um, I mean, the bottom, <laughs> the bottom line is, Donkey, you're going to have to watch it because there's no way <laughs> in a pink yeah, fit, in a pink fit, and I'm saying pink fit in a punny way because they're using pink balls for Christ's sakes, there's no way in a pink fit that I'm going to be watching AFLX. I have absolutely no interest in AFLX whatsoever. I think it's ridiculous. Well, you know, I will, I will wear that cross. And uh, look, I'm looking forward to seeing a few Zuper Dupers, a uh, couple of Zipper Zappers, and a few Nibbly Nobblers, and, um, and looking, getting on with that AFLX 2019. Yeah, all right. Well, thankfully, it's only one. <laughs> uh, and that's it for our massive AFLX wrap up. Uh, we're obviously very keen <laughs> about it. All right, look, that's probably it for tonight too. We've gone, we've managed to stretch it out to an hour. I don't know how the hell we did that. It was all that bullshit we were talking about. Um, just a couple of things before we go. Obviously, it's been a bit free and easy tonight, but we will settle back into our normal routine. There'll be a couple of new things going on during the season. Uh, we're very, very fortunate uh, to have uh, a leading AFL scribe uh, joining us in a couple of weeks uh, to preview the season. So that's something to look out for. Uh, lots of other interviews in the works too. Uh, if you want to support us, if you like what you hear from us, go to our Patreon page or go to our website and click on the Patreon button and select a tier. Though all the uh, all the different uh, things involved in each of those tiers will be up and running by round one. So don't worry if they're not there yet; they will be. Um, Mac is going to be back next week. 
Peter will be back next week. It's all happening. Anything to add? No, no it's no. lovely to be back. We've missed everybody. It is nice to be back. The strikers suck. The test team suck. The tennis sucks. So bring on the footy. And I reckon that'll just about do us for tonight, guys. Thanks to everyone for joining us on the chat. Thanks to everyone who joined us on Facebook. And we will be back next Tuesday with the roundup of the first round of the AFLW and everything else that's going on. See you later, guys. Yeah, all right. Night all.